is I, Creepy Old Leader, and welcome to this very nice video. Now, a while back, many years ago, Piglet did a sort of movie review. I think it was of uh, The Secrets of Dumbledore, yes, that cringe bag movie. So I thought that I too could do a sort of, well, um, how do you say, movie review? Right, well, here we go. I'm going to talk about today the film the Last Robot. No, that's not right. It's the, uh, the, the Wild Robot. Yeah, I don't know why I keep saying The Last Robot. I feel like that's a movie or something. Anyways, so it only is logical that I talk about this film. I mean, it was a film about a robot and I too am a robot. I mean, I prefer the term droid myself, but if we must, I suppose I fit into that mechanical category. Now, to tell you the truth, I don't really know why I saw this children's film. I haven't been very impressed with children's films lately myself. I think the latest children's film I watched was uh, The Bad Guys, and um, I wasn't very impressed, I won't lie. I think the critics are a little wrong with that 88 on Rotten Tomatoes. I feel like 75 is more adequate. Now, I agree that Sam Rockwell's performance was truly... Academy Awardable and should have uh, gotten him many Oscars, but I f f apparently not everyone agrees. Anyways, um, I also recently filmed the film, viewed the film uh, Fantastic Mr. Fox. Now, I was impressed with this one. I'd never seen it and I never read the book. I always wanted to. And I also recently viewed the kids' film The Witches. So, I've been watching a couple children's films. Now, because such a film is made for children doesn't mean an adult can't watch it. But, um, so, uh, I thought I should watch this wild robot, because uh, back on May the 4th, because, you know, of Star Wars, May the 4th we saw Phantom Menace in theatres, a little thing that our local theatre did, and I it was, I loved it. But one of the trailers was for this film, and it was called The Wild Robot, and the, the, it intrigued me very much. So, apparently it's based on a book. Um, my friend, uh, his, uh, girlfriend read the book, but... I never heard of it until now. I was like, yeah, well, that sounds cool. And I was like, oh, Mark Hamill is in. I saw his name in the trailer. I was instantly hooked. I thought Mark Hamill was going to play the Fox character. I was wrong. That was Pedro Pascal, who a very good performance on his part, but that's not what we're here to talk about. So I recently saw this film at my local theatre, and let me just say that I really am lost for words, not the movie itself, but for the experience I suffered when going to see the picture. You see, I said I went online and I typed in the last of uh, the wild robot showtimes near me. And so it said 11.30 a.m. I was like, okay, well, all right, well, no reason to buy ahead of time. I'll just buy it when I get there. So I get up in the morning, I do my workout, and then I'm about to leave. And um, so I'm... I'm about to head off to so this movie, and I'm going. And then the bridge to get across the river right next to my home is closed. So I'm, I'm pretty pissed about that. So I'm like, okay, minor setback. Well, 20 minutes and about 400 red lights later, I'm driving down Front Street, and it's 40. Now, I usually never go the speed limit, you know, but in a situation of rush, I would. But the douchebag in front of me was going like 25 through a 40 zone. So I was like, are you kidding me? Anyways, I get there right about 11.25. I'm like, that's okay. It doesn't start until 11.30. The movie itself won't even start. The trailers will start. But I get in there, and there's no employees to help you buy tickets. It's all automated now. You have to buy it on a computer. So I go up to the computer. I'm like, oh, the Wild Robot Showtimes. Where's the 11.30 when it's not there? They have one at like 1 or 12 or 12.45. But it's like, no, where's my showing? And I wasn't thinking straight, because I was like, oh, i got to go see the movie, it's going to start at 11.30. So I was like, rush brain, I was like, kind of panicking, I was like, what do I do? So I see there's a showing at 11.15, and I think, oh, okay, yeah, you know, it has probably, it, the, the trailers have started, you know. And the movie itself hasn't begun yet, so I was like, okay. So I purchased it without realising that it was in what is called a sensory theatre, the sensory showing, so I don't know what that is, so whatever. I get my popcorn, my drinks, my M&Ms, and I'm off. The guy's like, theatre nine, so when I go to theatre nine, I'm like, hold on a second, buy my two tickets, I get in there, and the movie's already started! I mean, what the heck? Usually, uh, I know I was a little late, but uh, when it says it starts at 11.15, um, uh, I thought the trailers would start then. Nope. Apparently it 
have actually begun then. So I go in, it's a tiny theatre. I am the only person in the whole theatre. And I thought I bought a seat in the back. No, nope, apparently I was viewing it the wrong way. So I bought a seat in the front row. So here I am. Here's the screen. I can barely see anything. And the movie's already started. I'm like, what's going on? Why are the lights on? And the lights are on. And the, mo the movie's pretty quiet. So I look it up on my phone as the movie's happening. And apparently a sensory showing is when they keep the lights on in the theatre and they turn it, the, mo the movie down a bit. I didn't know this. I didn't know this was a thing until now. So I was like, oh, what the fuck is going on here? So, um, the movie's already started by this point. So I'm like, well, I paid for it and I already bought my food. So I'm not leaving. And the movie was about, mm, yay, 15 minutes in, maybe 20. So I missed the most crucial part, that being the beginning, the part that, you know, sets it up. So I'm like, what is going on? I just walked in on this film. And because of that, I spent the rest of the film completely confused. I didn't know what was going on. I spent, well, I, eventually I did. I'm, I'm pretty smart. I, I, I caught on. I actually, when I was sitting there, about after five minutes of being in the theatre, I, I, I looked up the plot summary and I read up to where I walked into the theatre. It's like, oh, okay, that's what's going on. But I didn't really know what was happening at first, to be honest. So I was a little pissed about that. I'm not going to lie. I'm a little angry. Now, I can't do an adequate review of this robot film because I haven't seen it all the way through yet. I finished the film and I will... I viewed it. I would, I'm going to go see it again, hopefully in two days. I was going to still see it in a week or two, but I was like... Uh, I have to go see it again, like, now. So I was like, I had to just see it to know, I had to get the full treatment, like, now. So I'm going to go see it in, like, another day or two. So cross your fingers. This one works out. I'm never buying a ticket ahead of time again. Oh, I mean, I'm never buying a ticket at the theatre again. I will always buy it online. You can scan my QR code. I don't fucking care. <sighs> okay. So we're going to have to pause right now. And then I'm going to go and I'm going to see it. I, or completely, and then we can complete this review. So, um, children, you stay right there, um, and I'll be back in a minute. Or five. Well, I'm back. So, I went and I did indeed view the film again. I had intended on seeing it a day or two after I had originally saw it. I saw it on Saturday originally. And I thought, oh, I'll see it on Monday. Well, today's Wednesday, so there you go. I still got to see it again anyways. I went to a different theatre and I bought my ticket ahead of time online. It scanned my QR code. I arrived 30 minutes early. I'm not lying to you. So I'm not taking any chances this time, guys. So in I went, go to the bathroom first. Then I got some popcorn. I asked the guy for a medium. They gave me a regular popcorn and they charged me 10.50 for it. I was like, what? 10.50 for some corn kettles that you made explode in a microwave? Are you joking? And I was struggling to carry it because it was like overflowing and falling everywhere. And the woman's like, the theatre's right over there and I'm special. So I got in 3D and I sit down 20 minutes early. I want to watch the stupid things that play before the movie, like the trivia or whatever. That was, that was cringeworthy. But I was the only one in the theatre, the whole showing. I had the whole picture to myself, great seat in the back, just great view, the, um, the, um, the 3D glasses, I, I stole them. I know you're not allowed to take them, but I stole mine anyways because I'm just that cool. And I watched the film from start to finish. I think, now I joined in the film about right after the robot met the duckling. So I missed like 15 minutes or so, and there wasn't much that I missed. The movie just kind of just starts, just throws you in there, which I think is quite neat. There, there were no even credits. It just threw me right in there. So that was actually really fascinating for me. So I think it just jumps on me right in it. And honestly, I must say, this movie, I can't praise it enough. Seeing it all the way through, start to finish, was glorious. It was beautiful. It was so wonderful. It was, it was refreshing, it was a breath of fresh air for movies, especially animated movies, and movies in general. It was so, so good. And I'm not just like, oh, it was so pretty. It wasn't what I would call pretty. It was so, the emotion was right on point, the entire film. The music was 
so wonderfully contemporary. It was such a modern, contemporary soundtrack, but yet it worked so well. The main theme that played when all the, the geese went on their migration and then at the end, it was beautiful. And the topic of migration, there was that, that animated film about a, a goose migration that only came out a little while before. So I don't know if they were taking inspiration or what, but I never bothered to see it. I assumed it was garbage and I could... It probably was not as good as this, because this film was beautiful. There was such raw emotion, the imagery, the colours, what a beautiful fall movie, I'd say. The colours, especially in 3D, were great. The ideas were mixed with the music and the colours and the imagery was just there. The scenes with the row where they run and the leaves would go flying and they take off and all the birds were flying. I think the migration scene itself, when the, the wild robot, uh, Roz, as we learn her name to be, when Roz watches her son, she takes a goose, and at the beginning of the movie, she accidentally crushes a goose nest. And she has to raise one of the geese, who she names Bridebill, with the help of the fox Fink. And the two of them have to raise this this goose, and the scene where he finally gets to join the migration and goes up is just beautiful to watch as all the birds go flying, and it was just so gorgeous from start to finish. And it carries on too. It's so, it was very interestingly tiny. There wasn't a third act breakup, there was a second act breakup. It, it was different. Roz and Bright Bill get into an argument after he realizes that he's not, that, you know, the robot isn't actually his mother. And he's like, I never want to see you again. And she's like, oh, and she goes away and gets sad. But that was only like 30, 40 minutes in. It wasn't the third act. It was a second act breakup, which I think is unique and different. Because instead of, you know, being sad and empowering us to finish the movie, it made us sad, but then empowered us to continue the movie. The third act breakup, the sadness of it, provided the strength and the reasoning to learn how to fly, to go on the migration, to provide the robot Ross with the reason to go off and to look at where she's from and finding of the dead robots and look at the data and whatever. It provided reasoning and support and a foundation which is different from a third act breakup where we, we get sad but we're gonna save the day anyways. No, no. We saved the day at the end but we didn't need to be sad to do so because we already got sad. I think one of the only drawbacks was the montage. There was about a 45, no, no, I'm not exaggerating, like a 10 minute long montage of them, the characters teaching the Bright Bill how to fly. And then this pop song played, it was like, oh lord. And that lasted for like 10 minutes straight, like they talk, music would die down, and then he'd fly, and then the music would pick back up and they'd sing, and then they'd stop, they'd talk, and fly again. It was like, oh my god, remember then? A couple characters kind of just showed up. And the movie acted like we were supposed to know who they already were. Uh, Bill Nye, not the science guy, but the British Bill Nye from like Love Actually and Doctor Who plays an, uh, an elder geese named Longneck. And he just kind of shows up during the montage. We're supposed to act like we already know who he is. And this character has never shown up before until this very moment. The same thing happens with another bird character that you try to teach him to fly called Thunderbolt. He just shows up and they're like, oh, hi. We We've definitely never met this character before, but we're going to act like we have. I think that was another thing. The characters were very interesting, very fun, very good cast, a very British cast, so I felt very much at home with that, of course. But it wasn't just an all-celebrity cast. Well, you could say, well, Bill Nye the celebrity, or Catherine O'Hara, or Pedro Pascal, or even Mark Hamill. Well, no and no. Pedro Pascal is the Mandalorian. Catherine O'Hara is in Tim Burton movies. Mark Hamill is Mark Hamill. You know, these actors are not what I would call super time celebrities. They are B minus, they're niche celebrities, and they gathered a real crowd of niche celebrities. I think they can use niche celebrities to reel more people in than just the actual celebrity because, you know, then more devote people go to see it. But it was nice to see such a unique cast get pulled together there to play all these different characters. And they were quite funny. And there were quite a couple of funny moments, I must say. The Beaver character, the Barry Parry, uh, whoever his name is, British guy, played him quite funny, I must say. One of the more funny characters. And there was some sort of, like, ominousness built up about this character, like he was going to, like, kill them. But they never got back to that. Catherine O'Hara is, ex is very good. She plays a mother, of course. She plays the mother possum of a whole bunch of possums, which is really funny. Mark Hamill is using his exact same voice from regular show, which I find really funny, but he doesn't show up with like 
halfway in, which is weird. Bill Nye is fantastic. Pedro Pascal is, is excellent. He's really good, I think. He really, he really gets into a lot of these lines. Like, he really digs into it. The whole cast, I can't pronounce her name, who, I'm sorry, who plays Roz is great too. You can see how, as the film progresses, her voice changes from, you know, robot to, like, emotion, human. And what's her name who played the villain was excellent as well. It was a really solid cast, but not a celebrity cast. And I think that's something that's honestly quite important when it comes to films. And the film, it was magical. It was great. It was a celebration of sound, of imagery, of colour, of imagination, of visuals. And it made me feel things. I cried at the end. I cried two points. I cried at the scene where all the animals were Ross said that she had to leave. And Fink is like, oh, but I have no friends. Who will I talk to? Who will I, what if I have to tell someone something? That was so sad for me. Because, you know... Totally can't relate. And then the, the other animals are like, you can talk to us. And it was so nice. And then the ending when Brightfield and Rawls were reunited, that was also a tearjerker. Now, I stayed through the whole film. You can kick me out if you want, but they didn't. I stayed to watch all the credits. Paid off there was a post credit scene, which is great, of course. It was such a beautiful movie. It was a heartbreaker. And it really shows to me that there are other animation companies out there besides Disney that can produce a damn good movie. And I think DreamWorks is a perfect example of this. Universal is... Illumination. Universal is so... The Lorax and Despicable Me. I love Despicable Me, don't get me wrong, I saw Despicable Me 4. Super funny, I saw it in theaters the day it came out, July 3rd. Super funny movie. A lot of references, quite obscure references actually that I found great. But it wasn't, you know, an emotional movie, it was just a funny movie. But I think um, DreamWorks produces these great quality emotional films. How to Train Your Dragon, excellent. The Bad Guys isn't emotional, but it's not Disney. It's I still put it in there as top tier. And Shrek, everybody knows and loves Shrek. It's it's that movie. It's the meme movie. Well, Disney, you didn't make Shrek. DreamWorks made Shrek. And although Shrek is the meme movie, Shrek is alone, memes aside, it is a good film. It is a good film. And I think that people need to realize that there are other film companies, other things out there besides Disney animated movies that are good. Because every other Disney animated movie, every Pixar film is just a heartbreaker, it's so sad. It's just another random Hispanic themed sad Pixar Disney desert movie. And it's ridiculous because that's all they make. And it's like, give me a break. None of my f friends, if I even have any, would enjoy this movie. None of them would go and see it. None of them, why would they see it? It's not a Disney movie. It's a DreamWorks movie. Just like The Bad Guys or How to Train Your Dragon. Why would a Disney fan see those animated movies? They have no reason to because they only think that Disney produces high quality films. And that's not true as proven by this movie, which was absolutely spectacular. DreamWorks really can produce great movies, and I think they, they're starting to realize that too. They, I hope, I hope they are. I hope, I hope they are, because this wasn't it was such a beautiful movie. I think it should be regulated by law that everyone has to see this movie at least once in the theater. If you want to see this picture, see it in the theater. The sound, the lights, the 3D, it was breathtaking. There was a little thing at the beginning, a little like uh, DreamWorks intro, kind of like a, kind of like a ripping off Disney or being like, we can do this too, where they show little snippets from their past films, like they have like, characters, like they had uh, How to Train the Dragon and the Bad Guys and Puss in Boots, and then at the end they had Shrek, who was like, right, Shrek, yes. And I think that they can really produce some good films. They really can. The only, I mean, there are a couple of flaws, everyone is flawed, you know. There weren't too many, you know, toilet jokes. I wouldn't consider there really being really that many what you would call a fart joke, I guess. There maybe was like one, but it, it's not like a vertically, you know, a fart joke like, like Disney would probably do. Which is, I'm proud of them for that. The only real flaw I would say is, we wouldn't call it flaw, it's, you know, thing I'm not a fan of was the ten minute long sequence of them teaching him how to fly with 
the pop song in the background, like the dance, do the sound halfway through the movie. I thought DreamWorks liked to put their song and dances at the end of the movie. What happened what happened to the DreamWorks, you know, dance party at the end of every single movie? I think it's quite interesting because it's in the middle of this film and the dance party is also in the middle of the bad guys as well when they all just stop and just have that song and dance at the party for literally no reason it's like so we have our dance parties at the middle of the film now in DreamWorks instead of the end of the film and they're all dancing and and Sam Rockwell character just pulls a fucking split and it's like where did you learn to do that how did you do a split you know you know I've always been able to do that I mean not all of our legs are like Twigs I happen to have a real leg. <clears throat> but more to the point, the last, the wild robot was a beautiful movie. It was glorious. It was so wonderful. The imagery, the music, the voice acting, the sound, the technique, the style, the emotion, the feeling. It moved me. And it's one of the best movies I've seen in quite a long time. I suggest that you give it a watch as well. That is after you subscribe to this YouTube channel. <laughs> you know, if you enjoy this review, why don't you comment and maybe Creepy Olita will have to review some more movies. So go watch The Wild Robot, please. From one robot to another, it is beautiful. Thank you. Don't, don't forget, forget to click below and subscribe to the official, official Very Nice YouTube, YouTube channel. channel.